the heart and mind of all the spirit. Thank you, Stephen. Well, it's a pleasure and honor to be here tonight. And you know what this time is all about? Community, as I said, and that's like more important now than ever, isn't it? Given everything that's going on, it's like, you know, I always feel like, if you put this band or this music, anything here tonight, on the front line of any battlefield, there would be no wars, right? Yes! I did prepare a few notes that I wanted to uh, share here. So obviously we're here to honor and remember Henry Butler. But most importantly, we're here to celebrate Henry Butler. Henry was such a powerful force. So powerful, in fact, that his very presence is still with us and most definitely in the room tonight. I hope you all feel that. Clearly it was something, uh, some, some, certainly some special sauce that was added to the mix when Henry was born. What I saw was there was nothing that Henry couldn't do if he set his mind to it. What greater example of Henry's unwillingness to let any obstacle get in his way than this blind man becoming an award-winning photographer. Yeah. Yes, we can all recognize his extraordinary gifts as a musician, but as an extraordinary photographer? This is tough for the majority of us to relate to. Many of us haven't faced and overcome such an obstacle to achieve success as Henry did with photography. I first learned of Henry's photography from Henry directly when I had jazz standard when he was playing there. I was really kind of stupefied when I heard about that. Of course, I had to ask him about his process and the need to rationalize how it was and someone who was unable to see could see with such a gift after all. It really threw me. It was one of those moments that made me really pause for some time. And knowing what he did remains such an inspiring story still. This story can not only inspire us all here tonight, but also inspire anyone we share it with. While they can't meet the man in person, all you have to do is explain what a force Henry was to, and start off by explaining how he was an award-winning photographer despite being blind. He never let his blindness ever define him. My work in relation, in fact, he used to come, when he'd come to the club, if he was late or something, he would say, like, oh man, I drove here and then I couldn't find a parking spot. <laughs> so then, so my working relationship and, a friend, and a friendship with Henry stemmed from his ridiculous talents as a pianist, of course. I've had the pleasure of booking and presenting Henry Butler in many contexts over the last couple of decades, as some of Stephen noted. But one night, so this backstory on that one was one night Stephen Bernstein and I were talking at the Jazz Standard where Stephen told me about this group concept idea and something he wanted to try. Now, you know when Stan, if you know Stephen, you know when he says, uh, and we can all hear him doing this with his voice now, Hey man, I think I would, it would be really cool. It would really be cool. Then I wish, I wish I had a dollar for every time Stephen used that phrase over the years. Though. And it were really cool. And they were. He was always, whenever he said something was cool, and to this day, it is. So, he is the personification of cool, too, right? That's why the thing with him. That's why I am. Give it up for Stephen Bernstein. Give it up. So he quickly went on to explain the idea of ending and augmenting his Millennium Territory Orchestra with Henry, where Henry would really be not just his foil, but also the star. Stephen was filled with such excitement explaining it to me that he was going to orchestrate some of Henry's own solos from recordings to be played by the group too while Henry was playing. And part of Stephen's genius was not only knowing just how right it would all be, but also to bring Henry into a much larger ensemble where he could still be, well, Henry. Needless to say, I don't think there was any hesitation on my part to say I'm in. Let's do it. I had no doubt it would be special and something intoxicating just like Nola's famous hurricane cocktail at Pet O'Brien's in the quarter. Yeah. <laughs> I won't go into my own personal Pet O'Brien's hurricane cocktail experience here publicly now, but I'll just say that I was quite naive in my 20s and uh, booking the first morning flight out of my first time going to Nola for Jazz Fest on business. So anyway, so when Sue, on August 23rd to 26, 2012, Stephen Bernstein and Theo with Henry Butler plays the early blues is what happened. Yeah, so fittingly, Noah and Preservation Hall were the backdrop of one of my pro most profound musical experiences ever with none other than Henry Butler on May 4th, 2012. 
and that is being well given all the musical experience I've had over the years booking jazz standard for 19 years. I was back in my hotel and I was quite exhausted, but the Midnight Night Preserve show at the hall I wanted to see was Henry Butler's solo. I knew I had to get there regardless of how tired I was after many sleepless nights <laughs> at NOLA. So seeing Henry Butler's solo concert at Presbyterian Hall was something I just, as I said, knew I had to see. What I would have imagined is not only would I catch one show, but I wouldn't be able to leave and get back to my inviting bed until Henry played his last note on that night. That was after 2 a.m. or close to 3 a.m., I don't remember, but it was a singular, singular most virtuosic display on the history of piano that I ever bear witness to, honestly. And mind you, it was all on that upright, somewhat out-of-tune, press hall piano. But Henry's fingers danced all over those keys that night in a way that made one think he was working the most eloquent Stan D ever. I only wish there was recordings of that show that everyone could hear it, as I did, to revisit time and time again. So when all was said and done in conclusion, and only one thing that Henry wasn't able to do, that was all that we all wish he could so do, was to have beaten cancer. That said, he battled it solely on his own terms, and he never let it beat him. To that end, Henry inspired us all by his example and continuing to live his life to the fullest, even throughout facing what was an his toughest obstacle. So what I have to say here to everyone, we've all known people have lost loved ones to cancer is fuck cancer. I love you, Henry. And now, Stephen Bernstein, Black Territory Orchestra, Hot 9.